The term radiation is used for electromagnetic radiation, which are waves of energy that radiate from a source. Now, the original source can be something like the sun, or it can be the nucleus of a cell. What makes waves different from one another are the amount of energy overall. So you have low energy waves and high energy waves in the electromagnetic spectrum. It's also low energy radiation or high energy radiation. And the lower energy waves are called non-ionizing radiation. So that's low en energy and low energy doesn't do anything to you. So if it's a radio wave, a microwave, or visible light coming from the sun, that's low energy and it's not going to be dangerous. Higher energy on the electromagnetic spectrum that is called ionizing radiation, that becomes dangerous. X-rays, gamma rays, those can be released from a machine or from the nucleus of an unstable atom, which we'll get to in, an, in another module, that gamma rays are high energy X-rays are high energy and also UV, and that's UV energy coming from the sun, is high enough energy to break bonds in molecules and those ionizing forms of radiation are dangerous. So not all radiation is dangerous, definitely not most of the types of energy on the electromagnetic spectrum. Those are low energy, non-ionizing, not dangerous radiation. So electromagnetic radiation includes all these types of energy, includes UV, X-rays, gamma rays, um, X-rays and gamma rays being higher energy and more dangerous. But it also includes these lower forms of energy like visible light. And visible light can be broken into the colors of light you can see like this rainbow, Roy G. Biv, standing for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Heat energy is officially called infrared or IR. And there's also microwaves, the microwave in your house. These three, visible light, infrared, and microwave, those are all lower energy than UV, and these are low energy and you don't need to protect yourself from, just as you don't need to protect yourself from the light that you can see coming from a flashlight or the indoor light. You don't need to protect yourself from any heat, the, the heat energy, like when you're standing near a heater, and you also don't need to protect yourself from a microwave so how many of you are afraid to stand in front of a microwave? Not me. Um, well, the microwave is low energy, lower energy than the UV that's part of sunlight. If you're afraid to stand in front of a microwave, then you got to ask yourself, then why am I standing outside in the sun, which is higher energy UV? All those forms of electromagnetic radiation are waves, um, and they are waves of energy which is different from waves that you can see, waves like water in the ocean. Electromagnetic radiation, you can't see these waves. This is energy that radiates through space, mostly as waves you cannot see, though you can see visible light. You can't see the UV, you can't see gamma rays, X-rays, or microwaves. Any wave can be described by two main characteristics, the wavelength, and the frequency. Wavelength as the distance traveled from equal portions of a wave, like peak to peak or crest to crest. And so here's a wave, this red wave. You can find one wavelength from this peak to this peak. And wavelength has embedded as part of the word length. And so any length is measured in its meters. And you will usually have a metric prefix associated with wavelength like nanometers. Wavelength is represented by the symbol lambda. Now this is an upside down Y. You might not be used to it, but this is lambda part of the Greek alphabet and it is going to be used in the equations for solving problems with wavelength and frequency and energy. Now frequency is the other characteristic and frequency is how many waves pass through a point in one second. So this red wave that has this wavelength you would take one point, so choose this spot right here, and count how many waves go through that point in one second. Frequency is represented by the symbol nu, which is this, looks like a cursive V. It has the units of cycles, or how many per second, and it's represented different ways. It can be just one over S, or S to the negative one, 
or hz, which stands for hertz, which is 1 over s is equal to 1 hertz. In these two waves, the red wave and the blue wave, the red wave has a wavelength that is longer than the blue wave that has a shorter wavelength. There's a greater distance from peak to peak compared to a lesser distance from peak to peak. Now, wavelength and frequency are related. They are inversely proportional. If one is high, the other is low, or if one is low, the other is high. You can see from the red wave, the higher wavelength has less waves passing through this one point in one second. So a high wavelength means a lower frequency. Compared to the blue wave, this has a shorter wavelength. They're closer together. And so the low wavelength has a higher frequency. If you choose the same one point, more of these waves pass through in one point. So wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional.